By the time the Chancellor set off this morning for Parliament, he had had more bad news. Inflation at 6.2%, a 30-year high, putting an even bigger squeeze on household incomes. MPs wanted to hear what he would do about that, but first he had a message. In times like these, he said, balancing the books is a vital part of national security. So when I talk about security, yes, I mean responding to the war in Ukraine, but I also mean the security of a faster growing economy, the security of more resilient public finances and security for working families as we help with the cost of living. But there was help. First, an immediate cut in fuel duty of five pence a litre for one year. And to help lower earners, there's a rise in the threshold for national insurance. No one will pay NI contributions up to £12,570 in earnings. A tax cut for employees worth over £330 a year. The largest increase in a basic rate threshold ever. And the largest single personal tax cut in a decade. Through the Household Support Fund, local authorities will get an extra £500 million to help those most in need. But benefit payments have not been raised. The Chancellor said he was deliberately being cautious because of warnings from the official budget watchdog, the Office of Budget Responsibility. The OBR have not accounted for the full impacts of the war in Ukraine. And we should be prepared for the economy and public finances to worsen potentially significantly. But this Chancellor insists he is a tax cutter, so he had a big promise, only we'll have to wait. I can confirm before the end of this Parliament in 2024, for the first time in 16 years, the basic rate of income tax will be cut from 20 to 19 pence in the pound. In Scotland, the lowest rate of income tax is already 19 pence, so it won't be affected. But just in case you had any doubt about the message the Chancellor wants to send... My tax plan delivers the biggest net cut to personal taxes in over a quarter of a century, and I commend it to this House. Congratulations from his own team, but for Labour, the Chancellor's refusal to scrap the coming national insurance rise is a wrong turn. On the basis of the statement today and the misguided choices of this Chancellor, families and businesses will from now on endure significant hardship as a result. And others are surprised he's not done more to help the poorest now. I wanted to see a £15 billion boost to universal credit, which would have meant for households that are at the sharp end of this cost of living crisis, anywhere between £1,000 to £4,000 in their pocket. That would have provided real tangible help now. He chose not to do that. He did get cheers from his own side, but even they know the tough times are just beginning. Andy Bell, Five News.